The Digimon card game has been out for a bit in Japan, and we now have three starter decks, the first booster set, and another booster set on its way in July. We also have several promo cards, and with all these cards releasing, there's a big question that has been on everyone's mind. Will this game be releasing outside of Japan? Unfortunately, I don't have an answer for that question, but the good news is, is that even though this is not available outside Japan, you can still play this with people online. I'm going to be explaining how to do so using Tabletop Simulator, though there are other means to be able to play it. You may find that Tabletop Simulator is not the way that you prefer playing, so if that is the case, definitely look into some of the other options that are available. Now. I'm not on Tabletop Simulator right now, and that's because we want to start off at this website, digimoncard.dev. There are a lot of different websites out there that have been archiving the different cards available in the Digimon card game, but this one is my personal favorite for a bunch of reasons that I'll go over today. Now, I'm not going to be going over how to play the game just yet. I will be going over that in a live stream tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, so definitely check that out if you want to see this game in action and figure out how to play for yourself. Instead, right now, I'm just going to be showing you how to set up a deck using digimoncard.dev and importing that deck into Tabletop Simulator for you to use. This website definitely makes it very easy to get going as quickly as possible, so I'd highly recommend using it for your deck building. First, I'll show off a few of the things this website has to offer. At the beginning, we start off looking at the different sets that are currently available, including the three starters, the promo cards, and the two boosters. If we click on the Gaia Red starter deck, we're going to see all the cards that are available there, and right away you'll notice something very important, and that is that these cards are all in English. I cannot stress how amazing the community has been with their work on this card game. They've gone through, they've translated every card that we know about so far into English, and it's amazingly well done. If we look at a card like Garudamon right here, for example, we see that the text is up still above the image. This is not easy to do. I cannot stress that enough that it's not easy to just change out Japanese text or English text in this way, and they are doing an amazing job of making this look as beautiful and as seamless as possible. If you were to show this card to somebody, they would have no idea that this was originally in Japanese. They'd just say, oh, okay, there's an English card. So that's one of the greatest things about this is that it makes it very easy for people who speak English instead of Japanese to be able to approach this game more in a more simple way. Now when we click on any of these cards, we'll get some details as well. We'll see the name, card type, and a bunch of other information about that card. Um, again, all that information is on the card itself, so you don't necessarily need to read the stuff on the right, but it might be a little bit easier for you to see. You can also change the zoom level, just like this. So that way you don't even have to click on a card to see the details about it. You can make it big enough for you to read without doing so. I'm going to put it back to smaller for just the purposes of this video though. Now you'll notice that since I clicked on this starter deck, there's now a filter in the search bar for ID ST1. That means the cards that are all displaying have that as part of their ID number. So again, if we click on Bergeron here, we'll see ST1-05, meaning starter deck 1, card number 5. If we wanted to look at other cards, we could take that filter off, and you'll see we're back at the different sets um, to choose from. Now the nice thing is, is not only can you choose by sets, but you can also choose by color, by name, by anything that appears on the cards basically. So if we wanted to pull up, let's say green for example, there we go, we can see all these different green cards. So we have all the green cards up. If I wanted to find cards that were just of Gomamon, I could type in Gomamon. And there we go, we have all three Gomamon cards. So you can filter by whatever you want here. Now, this is great if you just want to look at the cards, but there's a lot of other good stuff to be had here too. And one of my favorite things about it is, like I keep saying, the deck builder, and this is where we get into the really good stuff. Now, I've got the deck builder open here, so if I wanted to find a specific card to add to my deck, like let's go back to those Gomamon. And I want to add all three of these to my deck. Well, I just click on each one, and bam. Now they're all three in my deck, I can add duplicates of them. Keep in mind, you can only have up to four of each card. And that's not of each name, that's of each card. So this Gomon is ST202, so that's different from P004. They are not considered the same card if they have different numbers. Now as I'm adding this, you'll notice up here as well that the cards option right here says 12 out of 50. You gotta have 50 cards in your deck, and so when, as you add cards, you'll be able to see how many you currently have in there, and you can also see how many eggs you have as well. So if I wanted to add, let's go with Upamon. There he is. We'll add a few of him. You'll see the deck 
for eggs is going up separately. And that is the case in this card game. You do have a separate deck for eggs than you do for the rest of your cards. Apart from the number of cards currently in your deck, there's also several useful tools over here. So for example, we can hit move and that will allow us to move our cards around. We can click edit to go back to being able to edit them rather than moving them. And if we hit this lock icon right here, that'll prevent us from being able to add or take away from any of those cards down there. So let's go ahead and put this back to the smaller screen there. I'm gonna turn off the lock. We have the import export option, which we'll get into that in a minute. We have the delete option, which will allow us to delete this entire unsaved deck, which we're not gonna do right now. We can change the zoom, which when you're looking at just the names, that may not be as important, but you can use this in conjunction with full cards to be able to zoom out of the actual cards so that you can see those instead of just the names of each card. And they nicely stack up as well so you can see how many of each one that you have. Now if we hit this button right here, that's going to put them back to 100 to reset your zoom. And then we have save, which we'll get to that one in a second, but we also have roll so that if we click on this, we can see what a starting hand might look like along with our security. We have less than 50 cards right now, which isn't great, but this at least lets you see what you might expect when you are actually playing the game and will help you further develop whether or not you want to add or take away some cards. You can do multiple rolls too as well just by hitting that button right there. Obviously we get nothing but Gomons each time because I've got nothing but Gomons in here. And we can also see our stats in the deck showing us how many of each type of card we have as well as what level Digimon we currently have and our colors. You can change that to be a percentage value as well if you so choose, but I personally prefer to leave it on the numbers here. Now let's see what this looks like with an actual deck. The nice thing about this site is that not only do you have access to all these cards, but you also have access to a lot of pre-built decks made by other users. So we're gonna go to the decks tab right here. And we're just gonna take one of these random ones here. We'll take this, uh, this one by pointing and laughing. So let's go ahead and hit the edit button on that. Yeah, we'll delete our unsaved deck because we don't need that. And there we go. We're gonna put this to the big screen mode. So we can see what's in here. We have five eggs, we have 50 other cards, and we can see what each of those is by scrolling down here. This is a green and red deck. Now, multicolored decks are a little bit risky, so make sure you understand the game before attempting to do those so you know what that will entail. Just as a quick note on colors, Digimon can only evolve into Digimon of the same color, and you can only play option cards when a tamer or Digimon of that color is on the field. Now, if we wanted to look at this one's stats, we could see right away, okay, so they have 34 Digimon in here, 16 options, not a single tamer, that's interesting. I've not seen people do that before. We see in this deck that they definitely favor the level three to five Digimon, while level six, there's only two of in there, both of them being this Grand Kawagamon. And we see this 30 reds compared to 25 green. So there you go, that's what this deck looks like. And we can edit it and change things out if we so choose. So let's say we don't want Grand Kawagamon, for example but instead we want to get a nice War Greymon in here. Well, there we go. Now we've added War Greymon. He'll be at the end of here. And so now we have that as an option as well. You can edit the deck as much as you like, and whenever you're ready, just hit that Save button. And you'll notice I already have two save slots here for stuff that I'm doing. But we'll go ahead and click on New Save Slot, where we'll make, change our name right over here on the left. And we'll just call that Example. And there we go. So we'll hit Save over this slot, there we go. So now we have a name in there so we can recognize it more easily. And there we go, we have a deck, it didn't take us much. We edited an existing one, of course, but you are also free to start from scratch and make the deck however you want. And again, I'm just using this as an example, so let's see what the next step is. So if I click on Import or Export, we see there's a lot of different options for where you can export to. We got Text, we got Untap, we got Tabletop Simulator, Tabletop Simulator Custom Deck, and I don't know what the full name of this is, Octogen. We'll just, well, I'm just gonna call it Octogen. <laughs> I don't know what it's actually called, I apologize. But either way, we can export it to a lot of different formats. Now, I'm using Tabletop Simulator, and you notice there's two different ones here for this. Now, there are a few different Tabletop Simulator mod, or what are they? Steam Workshop mods, I guess is what they're called. Is that what they're called? Yeah. So there's a few different mods in Steam Workshop for this game. So if you wanted to import it to any Steam Workshop version of this game, then you can use the TTS custom deck to do so. This is going to generate all the images for you to import directly into Tabletop Simulator. Now I'm not gonna show this feature off right now because I'm gonna be showing you this one. Because on this one, there's a Steam mod that specifically works with this type of export using DigimonCard.dev. You'll see all this text right here. And what we're gonna do 
is we're just gonna copy all that text right here. We'll save that for later. So we see a link to the Steam mod and a guide on how to import to TTS. So I'll explain both of those. I'm not gonna go over how to install the Steam mod. If you have Tabletop Simulator on Steam, you can use this link to go to the Steam mod and to add it to Tabletop Simulator. Once you have that mod installed, we are good to go to Tabletop Simulator and paste this information into there to import our deck. So I'm gonna show that now. Here we go, here's Tabletop Simulator. And look, Dawn of the Zeds, isn't that great? All right, so we're gonna go to Create, and we're just gonna do single player for this case, because we're not gonna be playing with anyone right now. And you'll see in your workshop here, I've got Digimon TCG 2020 Ing. This is the mod in question. You also notice I have a couple other Digimon things in there. Don't worry about that right now, but we're gonna go to this one. Do I wanna load? Yes, I do. Okay, so everything has loaded in, and right away we see a nice big fancy mat for playing the game. We see a memory counter up here that we can move up and down. And if we zoom out, we can actually see a whole bunch of the cards. So we have the booster over here, we have the starters over here, as well as the promo. So you could just easily grab these cards and move them around and make a deck this way, but it's definitely a bit of a struggle to do so, and not what I would recommend doing. Instead, we copied that text earlier. So what we'll do is we'll go into our notebook right here, and we see where it says my deck. We're just gonna paste that text right in here. And then we're going to leave the notebook. And now, if we hit this load button, bam, there's our deck came right in. We'll pick that up and put that over here. And if we right click, we can search through it. And there we go, we can see all our cards. Now, what I'd recommend doing first and foremost is to take out all of the Digitama cards. And this is just to make things easier for the future. So now we have the deck separated into our 50 card actual deck and our five card Digitama deck. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight this deck and I'm going to choose save object. And I'm just gonna save this as example deck. And do the same with the Digitama. Save object as example Digitama. So now that I've done this, I'll just uh, delete both of these. There we go. And so they're gone. So instead of importing again, what I can do now is if I go to my objects menu, I can go to saved objects. And here we go. We have the example deck and we have example Digitama. And I can even take those in multiple times if I really wanted to, but I don't necessarily need to right now. And there we go. We have both of them ready to go. No effort whatsoever. We can put them on our deck over here, we can put this on our raising area, and we are ready to play the game. Now, I'm not going to get into playing the game right now. Instead, tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm going to be playing this game on a live stream to be able to demonstrate exactly how you play it. You'll be seeing a real game happening, You'll, we'll be explaining the rules as we go so that everyone can get a good idea of exactly how to play this. And that will be over Tabletop Simulator, so again, you can play this game using other means, but overall Tabletop Simulator does look very nice, and with... Um, and when you use DigimonCard.dev, it's very easy to use overall. So we'll get into that tomorrow. We'll explain the actual rules. We'll explain how to play. We'll go into all that. So make sure to catch that. Now, if you did click on this video after June 5th, well, then obviously I'm, the live stream is over and it's done with, but you'll still be able to find a link to that live stream at the end of this video. It won't be live anymore, of course, but it will still be up. So there you go, and that's pretty much how to get set up to play the Digimon card game using Tabletop Simulator and DigimonCard.dev. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll also leave a link in the description to the Digimon card game Discord, where there are a lot of very knowledgeable people that will be very happy to help you get this set up. You'll also find me talking about this game at the Digimon Discord community in the card games channel, so feel free to chat with me there if you want. Anyway, that is all for today, so hopefully I'll see some of you at the live stream tomorrow, and hopefully I'll be able to battle some of you in the future. I'll talk to you later. Bye.